Jock Zonfrillo, MasterChef Australia judge, chef, and author, died at the age of 46. On Monday, his family acknowledged his death, saying that our irreplaceable husband, father, brother, son, and friend died on Sunday in Melbourne. There was no mention of a cause of death. A spokeswoman for Victoria Police stated that the death was not being investigated as suspicious. A report for the coroner will be drafted. The new season of MasterChef Australia was supposed to launch on Monday night. However, Network 10 has announced that it will not air this week. We are devastated to share that Jock passed away yesterday. Zonfrillo's family wrote in a statement, with completely shattered hearts and without knowing how we can possibly move forward in life without him. There are so many words to describe him, so many stories to tell, but we're too overwhelmed right now to put them into words. Keep this brave Scott in your hearts when you have your next whiskey. For those who crossed his path, became his friend, or were lucky enough to be his family. Celebrity chef Jamie Oliver, who appeared on the first episode of the upcoming season of MasterChef Australia, said he was in total shock on Instagram. We had the best time working together for this year's MasterChef. I can't tell you how good it was to work with him. Oliver penned a letter. Jock was really giving with his time and spirit in the show, and I was very appreciative. Jock will be sorely missed. I can't believe I'm typing this. Former MasterChef contestants Laura Shered, Sarah Chiang, Depinder Chibber, Minoli De Silva, and Reynold Pornomo all paid tribute to the chef on social media, with Pornomo admitting he was shocked by the news. Chef, rest in peace. My heart and condolences to loved ones, he said on Zonfrillo's Instagram. Chefs Colin Fasnage, Rushing Call, and Dan Hong all expressed their condolences. This is devastating. Hong commented, while Zonfrillo's death was described as incredibly sad news by former culinary critic Pat Norris. His death has left us poorer. Truly heartbreaking, he captioned a photo on Instagram. Endemol Shine Australia, which produces Network 10 and MasterChef Australia, stated in a statement that they were deeply shocked and saddened by the sudden loss. On set, he was loved by the team, and his passion for food and the show was infectious. Endemol Shine Australia CEO Peter Newman said, He was also a fantastic champion for the MasterChef contestants, always wanting the best for them. The entire MasterChef team will miss him much. In this difficult time, our thoughts are with his family. Barry Zonfrillo was born in Glasgow in 1976 and began working in kitchens as a dishwasher at the age of 13. He dropped out of school at the age of 15 and began an apprenticeship at the Turnberry Hotel, becoming one of the establishment's youngest apprentices. Zonfrillo began working for famed British chef Marco Pierre White at the age of 17, despite the fact that he was destitute and addicted to heroin at the time. According to his 2021 memoir, Last Shot, he was only 22 when he was appointed head chef at Cornwall's Trisenton Hotel. Zonfrillo took over as head chef at Sydney's 41 in 2000, but he was dismissed in 2002 after setting fire to an apprentice's trousers for working too slowly. According to Zonfrillo, it was a bad practical joke. Martin Kramer, an 18-year-old trainee, sued Zonfrillo and won $75,000 in damages in 2007. Zonfrillo entered bankruptcy the same year. In Adelaide, he later opened various restaurants, including Restaurant Arana, Street ADL, Bistro Blackwood, and Nana Malazi. Restaurant Arana was selected Australia's Restaurant of the Year in 2018 by Gourmet Traveller magazine and The Good Food Guide the following year. It received three hats in 2019 and 2020 before closing in March 2020. In 2019, he replaced the show's original hosts Matt Preston, George Calambaris, and Gary Madigan as a judge on MasterChef Australia with Melissa Leong and Andy Allen. Some of the stories in his memoir Last Shot have been hotly debated, with White claiming that almost everything he has written about me is untrue in the chapters about Zonfrillo's time in London in the 1990s. Zonfrillo's claim to have visited hundreds of indigenous communities was also called into question. Zonfrillo, on the other hand, denied embellishing his life tale, adding, This is the story of my life. I've lived it all, the highs and lows, and I stand by it. 
There's no doubt that some of my book makes me look pretty shady even at my best. I carried shame, not pride, from those years, and it was a significant challenge for me to overcome when writing this book. Lauren Fried, Zonfrillo's third wife, and his four children survive him. Jock Zonfrillo was a heroin addict in Glasgow in the 1980s, but he is now Australia's best chef. In the early 1990s, the man who is now Australia's best chef, who was a heroin junkie at the time, lied his way to London and went to Marco Pierre White's restaurant at the Hyde Park Hotel. The age of Jock Zonfrillo was 17. He was born and raised in Scotland. Since he was 14, he had been using drugs, and he had just been fired from a job in a kitchen. He could have died before he even started living. But he chose to take that train, walk across the capital to the fanciest restaurant, and look for the most famous chef at the time. He didn't think that the tall bad boy himself would be the one to open the door. It was between services, but it never occurred to me that he would show up. And all of a sudden, there he was, this huge guy. I was stammering and talking like an idiot. I told him I was looking for a job, and he told me, you'd better come in. White led Zonfrillo down a hallway and into his office. He says it wasn't much bigger than the small corner of the Glasgow coffee shop where we're meeting today. White then turned and asked, What's your story? At that moment, Zonfrillo realized he could either make up a story or be brutally honest, and in that split second, he chose to be honest. He said he used to work in a hotel kitchen, but he was fired because he yelled and cursed so loudly that the customers could hear him. Marco can make his way into your mind in a matter of seconds. He asked, How do you think that makes your mother feel? I wanted to cry because I knew how many times I had made my mother feel bad, and I still feel bad about it. White then got on the phone and called the cook who had fired Zonfrillo. Zonfrillo says, At first, he hung up because he didn't think it was really Marco. But Marco called back and said, I'm looking for a reference for Jock. So the chef said, Jock is a drug addict and a complete waste of space. I was crying when I heard the exchange over the loudspeaker. I knew I wasn't going to get a job. I couldn't stop thinking about how the hell I was going to get back to Scotland. I didn't have any money. Then Marco thanks the chef, put down the phone, and asked, Don't you think you should come work for me? Zonfrillo was wearing his chef's jacket because he had nowhere else to put it, so he went straight to the kitchen and worked the next shift. The only trouble was that he didn't have a place to stay. I'd work for 18 hours, then leave with the other guys and walk around Hyde Park before going back to the hotel and sleeping in the changing rooms. I would wake up at 5 a.m., take a shower, and be the first one in the kitchen. This went on for a few weeks until, disaster, the sommelier forgot his bag one night and had to step over a sleeping Zonfrillo to get it. I thought I would be fired for sure. But the next day, Marco made plans for me to sleep on another chef's couch for a few nights and call the hotel, where I was given a bed right away. Zonfrillo says, White was always good to me. The bigger-than-life chef probably saw similarities between his own life and that of the young chef he hired. Both men were of Italian descent and didn't finish school. Both were also poor as teenagers when they showed up in London with White knocking on the door of the Rue brothers at La Gavroche. Even though Zonfrillo had a drug problem, what White did for him most was to believe in him. Zonfrillo remembers that other people couldn't see past the drugs, but Marco never said anything about it, even if I made a mistake. Thanks for watching.